Uh, today's webinar, of course, is going to cover SOLIDWORKS Visualize. I'd like to start off just explaining a little bit about MLC CAD systems and SOLIDWORKS and all the other software companies don't really sell or support their own software, which is where a value-added reseller or VAR comes into the picture. Um, MLC is one of the five largest VARs, and we've been doing it since the first release of SOLIDWORKS. Now, I myself am based out of Houston, Texas. I went to University of Houston with a mechanical engineering degree. My background is primarily in oil and gas, um, anywhere from you know small machining type uh, or injected components to big capital equipment like rigs, structures, and top drives and pipe handling equipment. The last three plus years, I've been an application expert here with MLC CAT systems. And in my free time, I am obsessed with waterfowl or duck hunting. So let's jump into it. So we're gonna cover today in the webinar um, an overview about SOLIDWORKS Visualize, how to start a project, um, and kind of what it could be used for, how it can benefit uh, you using your existing files uh, or your uh, existing files. We'll come into, of course, a product demonstration to uh, show you around the interface. Um, if you've not used uh, Visualize to create rendering project before, this is gonna be a great um, webinar for you. And I'll also get into a little bit more stuff like animations, and discuss some virtual reality and other examples. SOLIDWORKS Visualize um, is a high-end rendering tool that we use to create images, videos, maybe company logos, details. And these can be used all over uh, for things like uh, maybe marketing images or websites or even uh, demonstrations if we want to do that. You can start, as I said, by importing existing CAD files so you can take a look at your designs in SOLIDWORKS or other CAD softwares and import them into Visualize. Go ahead and start your render. And it also has the ability to import uh, a large library of existing tools like uh, appearances and environments that you can take advantage of from the cloud community online. So let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the software and I'll show um, around. It looks like a few of you are using Visualize Pro and then a lot of you are quite new. So I'll just kind of take it from the, the beginning here. This is the Visualize standalone application. I will also add that Visualize Standard is included uh, for free as long as you're on subscription service but with any SOLIDWORKS professional or premium license. Um, you can export a CAD file using the Command Manager Visualize tab and it'll automatically start a product or project in Visualize. Or you can start with a blank screen like I've got and import a model from here. I've got a project started of this coffee maker, so we'll go ahead and open this up and start going over the interface. So first thing that I do when I start Visualize is I wanna make sure that my um, graphics area or in Visualize, we would call this our 3D viewport is the right size. Now I've made mine a little bit bigger by going to tools and options. Before I click on that and show you, I wanted to point out that there's also a keyboard shortcut button in here. Um, there's not a lot of keyboard interaction that's required for Visualize. It's not super click heavy, but it can make the project go a little bit smoother and faster as we'll see later on to do things like animations and stuff just to bring up different portions of the software. Coming back into my options, you'll see that this 3D viewport here is where you would change the size. So by default, I think it comes in a little bit smaller and I typically let the 3D viewport uh, resize itself to fill the window. I like seeing kind of like in the graphics area in SOLIDWORKS as much of the model as possible. From here, you'll see that I have a couple other toolbars. Um, I'll cover these as we go through and build this product or um, rendering file. Visualize is really used, I like to think of it as just having um, essentially a professional photographer or marketing team in your back pocket and that you're doing, instead of using the physical models, of course, or hiring the photographer, we just use it straight from our CAD geometry. So I think of it as really a photography type tool. Up here at the top, you'll see that I have my base configurations. Now, Visualize Professional supports these configurations. And what they're used for is kind of like display states. Those of you familiar with uh, SOLIDWORKS, um, they're used to show different graphical or apparent properties or versions representing different 
camera shots or appearances in my model. Moving to the right, we see we have different render modes. So when we're done creating our project and all the different images or animations that we want to output from here, um, we can do that in our output modes. But while we're working in the software and setting up our project, this is the mode that we'll be looking at. So first we have a preview mode, which is not going to be as high quality graphics, but of course you'll be able to see things update a little bit quicker and it gets more accurate as you move to the right. For my demonstration, I'm going to leave it on this fast mode. That's typically what I use leave mine on. Next, we see the denoiser. I always leave this on as well. Um, in 2018, NVIDIA brought us um, artificial intelligence denoising to speed up and clean up uh, our rendering process even faster. To the right of that, we have our turntable, which is essentially exactly what it says. It spins your model or geometry around like it was on a turntable or rotisserie, so you can get a nice 360 degree view. This is a good option if you're outputting it to VR and want to walk around your model, for example. And I'll come back to that um, at the end of our presentation. Over to the right, this is kind of like using selection filters. Those of you, again, familiar with SOLIDWORKS, you can either choose to select things by a group, by part, or by model. Some other things that we can do is just manipulate things, maybe pivot, rotate, or move. We can also have the same kind of similar operations, but this one will only move our cameras. So instead of moving our model geometry around, we'll see later when we create our camera views, you can move just the camera and rotate it about, just as if you were moving a camera uh, around in a room for your photography setup. We also have our standard views. This is just a snap orientation for third angle projection on the front top right. And then lastly, we have our output tools. So let's go ahead and take a look at our coffee maker that we got computer zoom in. Computer zoom out. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> so the first tab over here is our model tab. This is, of course, going to have all of our model geometry. And I'm going to expand my Espresso maker here to show you the, the tree. Now, this is just the tree that I would get straight in from SolidWorks. Though there are a couple import settings within Visualize that we can change how that is grouped um, based on what we want to do. So instead of following the exact SOLIDWORKS assembly order or uh, model tree to show my parts, I can instead tell SOLIDWORKS to visual visualize to group those in my tree based on similar appearances or other data uh, that I want to use. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine just on the model tree here because I do want to take advantage of some other things that we can do to speed up my rendering process. One thing that we can do is, for example, with all these fasteners over here, is we can just add them to a new group. That'll simplify the tree, kind of like adding them to a folder in your SOLIDWORKS uh, feature tree. And when I apply appearance to uh, one, it'll apply to the whole group. Similarly, I'm going to take a look at this orange uh, plate that I have over here on the sides. I've got an identical one on the other side. So instead of adding them to the group, I'm going to control select them both from my tree, and say that I want to merge those two parts. Now, by doing that, when I apply appearance to one, it'll automatically apply to both of them. So again, it's just another way to save us time when we're going through and building up the uh, different appearances and color schemes camera views that we want to assign here. So I'm going to go ahead and start creating these views and appearances using my base configuration. So I'm doing this because some of the first appearances that I want to apply, I want it to apply to every version of this render project that I've got. So what I'm going to do is switch from my model tab and I'm going to be applying appearances you can see any appearances that are already in the file show up here. And these are just coming directly from SOLIDWORKS. So any color schemes or material appearances that are coming from SOLIDWORKS are directly uh, imported into Visualize. Now, if I change them here, it's not going to go back and change it in my SOLIDWORKS geometry. Um, so I can make a couple little tweaks. Maybe I've got a specific um, color of blue that I want to use. 
maybe a company standard for my branding or marketing team that they want to use a very specific blue, um, I could tweak and save those appearances in here. Um, I'm going to come to my library tab. Now, you'll notice at the top of my libraries over here, um, first off, in my library, I can have um, designated cameras, environments, uh, images, decals, maybe a library of different textures that I want to use, or what I'll start off with is this appearances. Now, I'm going to hit the parent directory, which is just this um, arrow, right angle arrow going up right here. And that's going to show me the root folder of this appearance library here. So this is my local library. I don't have any custom appearances, by the way. This is all standard stuff that I got straight from my Visualize install. But I also have access to the cloud library. So this is an online community of, of Visualize users that you can download um, other people's appearances or like I was showing earlier, textures or environments. And to download it, it's as simple as just clicking on what you want, maybe coming in here to a paint, anything in green or one that I've already downloaded. And to download a new one, you would just hit the download button right here. I'm gonna come back to my local library. And I'm gonna assign an appearance to the top component here in my model. So let's go to libraries. They're grouped kind of similar to how they're the appearances are grouped in SOLIDWORKS by maybe material type. So I'm going to come in and find a plastic. And to get that material or appearance to jump onto the model geometry, it's a simple drag and drop. So let's take a look at maybe this leather one here. I don't know why I would use leather on a plastic part, but it does look pretty sweet. The more you zoom in, you'll still see more and more detail as you zoom in here. Now I want to show you some other things that you can do. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as leather for just example purposes. I guess maybe molded would be a better example for this. Let's go ahead and use molded. Now after I've applied that appearance or drug and drop it onto my model geometry, you'll see it show up in your appearance tab over here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this leather appearances by right clicking, going to edit and delete. That's as easy as it is. So in my molded appearance that I'm going to go ahead and keep it here for my plastic molded part, I'll click on it. And we have a couple other things that we can do in here. So we can adjust the color scale by just clicking on this right here. If we have again, a specific color scheme that we want to use. You can also change the brightness or anything else that you want to modify and just tweak the exact color that you want. Now, you can add some transparency to this or come into the texture tab. So to enable the texture, this is a molded, I want to add a little bit of texture to this. So I'm going to turn on the bump. So by clicking bump, you'll see that I have this bump strength. And that's essentially how rough my texture is. You can use the slider here and you can even click in the box. I'm just left clicking by the way and dragging my cursor left or right to change that bump strength. Now the mapping of that texture can also be adjusted by coming in here and using a rotation or you can tile it you know differently maybe uh, along this way of the part versus um, perpendicular to that if you will. So that's our appearance tabs, and that's how we're going to create or add all the different color schemes for appearances for my photo rendering. So again, I'm going to have this molded appearance applied to every version of this project. So I went ahead and added that appearance in my base configuration. Again, the configurations within Visualize is part of Visualize Professional. To add a new configuration, I'm just going to hit the button to the right and hit my plus sign. My favorite color is green, so I'm going to go ahead and add a green configuration. And to add that, I'll again come back into my library and my appearances, and I'll drag and drop maybe a green appearance to the side plates over here. Now remember, at the beginning on my models tab, I had selected my two side plates and said to merge those two parts. 
So you saw that when I dropped the appearance onto one, I didn't have to rotate or duplicate the appearance to the other side plate. So that's kind of why I did that. It makes things really uh, neat and easy. I'll typically do that quite a bit for fasteners too, because most of the time I have the same material, very similar for all my fasteners, and I'll just go put a really um, nice chrome metal uh, fastener appearance on all of them. And then I don't have to zoom in and out and go sort through them in my tree and make sure I've got them all. So um, that's a nice way to do that. Um, if we switch back to the base configuration, you'll see the appearance just updates. And I can just add more uh, by coming in here, again, hitting my plus sign and maybe making an all black appearance. I'll come into my library again. Let me go up and try something different. Instead of a plastic, maybe look at a paint. Let's look at a jet black paint on this side. That looks pretty professional. Fantastic. So that's how we can create the different configurations or display states, if you will, for SOLIDWORKS users within SOLIDWORKS Visualize. We would just apply the different appearance for different configurations that we want to look at. So that's the first step that I always do when I'm creating my rendering projects. So I'll go ahead and apply my appearance here. So if you think of it like a photographer, it's kind of like I'm going to go put um, the makeup and costume um, on my model geometry. And the next thing that I'm going to do is set up uh, my cameras and everything else around it, such as the environment and lighting things. So moving from the left, we have again the models tab on my geometry, the appearances that we just took a look at. We also have scenes. So scenes is kind of like setting up the room around uh, where you're taking the, the picture. We'll also see um, a couple other things that it's going to do. I'm going to go ahead and apply a new environment to this scene. And these windows can be adjusted uh, as you want by just dragging them over here, by the way. I'm going to hit the plus sign and say add a new scene. You can add a sunlight environment um, or a new blank HDR environment or take advantage again of our library that we have. So I'm going to switch my library from appearances to environments. And to apply an environment, instead of dropping it onto a geometry, we would just drag and drop it into the graphics area. So not much change for this first one. Let's take a look at some of our other environments. Maybe Tokyo. There it goes. That one looks a little bit different. So each one of those environments, just like the appearances, can be tweaked um, by adjusting the brightness, rotation, or, ref or reflection about the thing. You'll notice that um, you'll get some reflection based on the environment um, on the model geometry itself. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my appearances tab. Sorry, I'm going to leave it on scenes. And let's go add some camera views. So the camera views, pretty straightforward. I've got a default camera over here. And we can manipulate that camera. I'm going to just add a new one. Say new camera. And you can zoom in about where you want. It's kind of like setting up the camera again in your photography room about what you're like, where you want the camera to be positioned. Now you can lock this in above a certain height from the floor if you like, um, or you can have it free floating. Um, some other ways that you can add and adjust the camera are by coming up um, into here and adding them straight from your product uh, project. So under the Scenes tab. Again, here we have the same option that we saw over there on the right with our plus sign for um, new sunlight environments or area lights. Of course, we have a new camera here. We can add a camera view this way. So you can change the camera type as well. I don't use the 360 very often. If I'm going to use a 360 camera, I'll typically just use a turntable view or create an animation to uh, demonstrate that. 
On the transform tab, this is more ways to manipulate where the camera is looking at your model. Um, and you can also adjust um, some of the positioning as far as longitude, how big our, our area the camera is going to take a snapshot or picture of, adjust the aspect ratio, um, or do a couple other things here. One thing that I wanted to point out is this depth of field. So let me zoom in on my model over here. And I did want to point out that this won't work if you won't be able to see what depth of field does if you're on this preview tab. You have to have your render mode set to fast or accurate. And again, I just leave mine on fast for the majority of most everything I do. So what depth of field does is essentially says, hey, visualize, I want you to focus in on this area or emphasize this part of my model geometry. And I want you to have this part be much clearer than the rest of it. So if I enable the depth of field, I'll just pick where I want to focus in my model. So maybe this chrome area, and you'll see that now it's kind of focusing in on this, but the other areas of the model, such as the cups in here, are still slightly fuzzy. So it's again, just really showing emphasis on uh, maybe something that you want to highlight, or maybe you've got a, um, a new feature or design improvement that you want to emphasize on your company marketing website. So once you have all your camera views set up how you want, maybe I've got a couple snapshots, again, uh, just highlighting maybe the front view, a right view. Um, the next thing to do would be to create animations and um, higher end content. So first thing that I'm going to do for my animations is I'm going to hit T on my keyboard. T is the hotkey for my timeline. And those of you that have used uh, animations within SOLIDWORKS or SOLIDWORKS Motion, or even animated some of your exploded views, um, will be somewhat familiar. It works very similar to how the interface in an animation does, where we have our time bar at the bottom. And whenever we add something to our time bar, it'll create a key that we can go then manipulate. I'm going to create a really short animation here um, as an example. Um, before I do that, if you want to output any of these camera views that we've already got, that's done by using this output tools tab on the far right. Now, sometimes if we have some really complex geometries or very high resolution images or um, sometimes animation, I may not want to use all my computer resources or take the time to render it right away. So Visualize gives me a couple of options to um, get around that and keep my efficiency. Um, first thing that you can do is send the camera or snapshot, whatever you want to do, send that to the queue. That works exactly how you would think. And essentially, you would have your render queue, and you could pick a time that you want that render job to start processing. You can send as many images or animations that you want, and it'll build that queue, and you can prioritize them um, based on uh, however, you know, whichever ones you want to run first. So. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll put one up in the queue and maybe set one to go at a lunch break or maybe the end of the day and I'll just let it go. That way I can just create what I want and move on and have it do all the high-end uh, resolution images creation um, when I'm not using my computer for other things. Another thing that you can do with Visualize Professional, and I'll highlight on this a little bit later, is also send up uh, what's called a render farm. So you can essentially network computers together, pool the hardware resources between multiple machines to create that render uh, much quicker as well. So a couple of different output tools here. Um, another thing that I'll put or, or explain in this output selection is we can also output animations by just selecting this button down here. Of course, once I finish creating my animation, and if you change the format, that's how you create a virtual reality project or, or uh, image. Let's go ahead and build this animation. So the first thing that I'm going to do is specify how long I want this animation to be. So if you look down here at the bottom, I have a red and a gold uh, time slider bar. How long I want my animation is going to be this red slider. So I'll just move that, maybe make a five second animation. And I can select model geometry straight from graphics if you want. 
I typically with this file, for some reason, always tend to grab the cord. So I'm going to switch back over to my model tab. And I want to say that I'm going to add all of these different colored coffee cups down here to the animation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move these out of the way and then I'm going to zoom in on the model and then show a different view in my camera. So what I first want to do is right click, go to animation. Notice there's another hotkey for this. It's K. Again, F12 will bring up all your hotkeys and add those to the keyframe. You'll see in my timeline down here, I'm just seeing those parts added to the keyframe. So it knows where those are at the beginning of the animation. Now I'm going to move the gold one to the end of my animation. From here, I want to choose what I want to do or how I want to manipulate these objects. I'm going to come up into my manipulation tools and rather than pivot or scale them, I'm going to say I'm just going to move these objects. Either zoom out. I'll go ahead and move these objects out of the way. And if I come back here to my time bar, you'll see that it publishes that movement as I move my cursor. So just to check and see what we did here, we should be able to, not the red one, move the left one back, and we'll see that model geometry go. Of course, if you want to preview the animation, you can see and just hit use the uh, toolbar right here, scrub, scrub through, make sure it's doing what you want. Um, another thing that you can do, and uh, I, I went in some technical session on this at 3D Experience World. Um, it's actually really easy to reuse the exploded views that you've already got in your CAD geometry um, to import into an animation. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever done the animate, explode, or collapse um, within SOLIDWORKS. Um, and if you have an exploded view, you can use the um, SOLIDWORKS Visualize um, add-in to do an export, and it'll export um, the uh, animation of the either explode or collapse straight into Visualize. And then you can just reuse that, and you don't have to go pick and choose every single model to go pull them out away from your main assembly. It just makes it a lot quicker. Um, if I'm trying to do more stuff like that and not move just to one or two components, I'll typically set it up in SOLIDWORKS and create my exploded view there first and then bring it into Visualize and add all my appearances and camera views and so forth. So once I've got this model geometry, uh, what I want, how I want it to behave and move, I also want the animation to, to rotate and I want the camera to move and zoom in with uh, the front of my coffee maker. So to accomplish that, I'm going to come into my cameras tab, and I'm going to add this camera view to my animation as, as well. So I'll say, I'm right clicking by the way, or I could just hit K, I'll say add to keyframe. Then just like I did with the other one, I want to put my yellow tab where I want the end of the animation to be looking at. So I'll go ahead and slide this bar over to the right. Computer zoom in. Go ahead and zoom. Finish the animation something like this. So now, when I come through and play this animation, I should see it do both of those operations, as we're seeing in my timeline over here with the keyframes at the same time. And again, to finish this out and have it go do that final high resolution image for maybe my website or YouTube video or example, I would just come into my output tools, make sure I'm set on animation and either start the rendering right away or again, send it to my rendering queue. So in a nutshell, that's really how you create a, a, a project in, in Visualize. Again, you can start with either a blank project or export straight from SolidWorks. And then I typically work left to right. I'll start by grouping and just organizing to make all the other things a little bit easy using the model tab by merging or grouping parts together. I then apply the appearances that I want uh, and I can take advantage of, again, those um, configurations to show different uh, color schemes. I'll then create my cameras or my views or snapshots and update any scenes uh, or geometry around 
the uh, the CAD file as well. In my course, I can use it as a static image, animations, or even VR output. So I'll go ahead and switch back over to the PowerPoint. I did want to go ahead and do a full render of a black version of this coffee maker. So you can see this is exactly what I just showed in our demonstration here. Now, I've got a few other examples. Um, those of you that are interested, maybe I'll show this mountain board. I've got just a PowerPoint with just different images of these mountain board um, examples. One of the really cool ones, um, and this one I just did a, a, one of the turntable 360 views, that rotisserie, if you will, uh, to rotate around this resonant uh, piece of equipment here. One of the other things that they added recently in SOLIDWORKS Visualize was physics simulations. So let me go ahead and start this. Um, those of you that remember our rollout from a couple of years ago when we had um, the Camper RV, uh, may be familiar with this file set, but here they're just showing the physical simulation uh, using rigid body uh, to drop the cups in Visualize. One of the other things that they've also added is vehicle simulation. Now, um, I'm going to pause this for a second. You'll notice, see this Camaro? This is a 1969 Camaro model. I'll come back um, to my visualize application in, section, in a second and show you where that is. This is actually one of the tutorial files. Um, you can actually, it'll lead you through about how to create a simulation, how to create animations, how to do appearances, camera views. All that using this uh, pretty sweet Camaro file. But take a look at this vehicle driving simulation that they added. Um, the vehicle driving is in Visualize Professional. Um, the physical, physical animation is available in regular um, Visualize Standard. Of course, I'm a Ford guy, so I had to add a Ford truck. You can actually use your keyboard to drive a vehicle down a path as well. Um, so let me break this out and then I'll get into a couple other um, VR or virtual reality examples. Looks like a couple of you guys are already using it now. That's pretty slick. I'd like to see some of your examples. Um, with standard, again, Visualize Standard comes with SolidWorks Professional or Premium for free as long as you're on subscription service. So subscription service um, you know, gives you access to all the uh, new, new releases and updates and tech support. Um, of course, visualize standard as we discussed, and also um, some CAM functionality as well. So let's, this will let you create all your images, maybe custom decals or logos. It does support VR. It also has PDM integration, so you can track your projects uh, and revision control in PDM. And as I just mentioned, it does have that um, physical models. Professional is a little bit higher end. It gives you the full animation suite. It'll also give you um, some advanced lighting. Um, I'll show you that as well when I show you the uh, tutorial here in a second. Um, and it gives you just basically more, um, more tools within each one of the different tabs that we looked at. Uh, more manipulators around the cameras, um, lighting effects, um, and it also uses that visualize boost. Visualize Boost is that network rendering, rendering capability that I discussed where you can kind of pull computer hardware resources together. And it'll also support um, the SOLIDWORKS animations and motion studies. So if you use, um, you know, a motion analysis or use Animation Wizard to do those, uh, you know, animated, exploded, or collapsed views that we've got from SOLIDWORKS, um, you'll want to go ahead and go with Visualize Professional. So, Here's a quick breakdown or screenshot of the two. Feel free to take a screenshot if you're um, trying to get a good comparison. This is a nice quick list. And I'll show you a quick couple virtual reality examples uh, before I jump back into the application and show you the last couple things. Uh, remember, uh, feel free to type any uh, questions here in the chat box as we go along. So here's there's a lot of virtual reality examples you can find on YouTube and kind of the way this works is exactly how you expect. Maybe some of you guys got some maybe Google Cardboard or other VR headsets for Christmas. 
here's the coffee cups that we saw a second ago. And you can zoom in and out and pan around and really immerse yourself as if you were in the environment. This is actually really cool. If you bring it up on your phone and you move uh, your phone around, it's, it's as if you're walking and looking around in the room. So it's even better, in my opinion, on your phone, of course, a virtual reality headset. One more that we've got here is just on the inside of this plane. So they did a sun study here as well. So you can kind of see the sun moving and, and, and updating the shadow appearance as it goes over the different geometries. Of course, you can zoom, pan, rotate, look around in this one as well. These are all on YouTube if you want to check them out, guys. Um, feel free. I'd really like to see those of you that are using VR. If you've got a cool example of one that you've created, I'd be uh, really interested in seeing that. Last one they've got here is just of a couple different uh, robot arms here. Of course, they're walking around and they've synced them together to illustrate those products. The lights that I wanted to discuss before I show you how to get into some of the tutorials and have you guys get started in uh, Visualize is if you come to Project here under Scenes, and this is for Visualize Professional, by the way, you can add these uh, lights and then pick a target. So what I'm going to do is maybe pick the top of this guy. And then on the right over here, we get all the extra tools to manipulate manipulate that light. I'm going to zoom out. You can actually see the light itself. So I've just got an area light in here. Um, I've got it enabled, which just means I can see the light source. Now I can change that to maybe a directional light or a spotlight. I'm going to leave it on area. One of the other things that we can do is pick the shape of the light itself. Um, so maybe I've got a tube light. I'll just pick a cylinder. Got a large cylinder over here, so maybe I want to decrease the size of the cylinder or even the length, and you'll see that light update your graphics area, of course. And you can use the advanced tab to even turn on or off shadows that you would get from that light source. That's some of the other advanced things that we can do with Visualize Professional and lighting. So I'll go ahead and close this project. Now, over here on the right, you'll see this is the Camaro that I was talking to. You can get to these tutorials by going to help or just jumping in here on the right. So here I'll show you how to create your camera and appearance of everything that you saw me do in addition to those vehicle simulations that we saw, some of the higher end stuff that we saw towards the end of the presentation. I hope you guys really enjoyed uh, today's webinar. I'm going to open it up for questions. Um, if you have some questions or have some more information that you would like to know about Visualize or any of the other SOLIDWORKS products, feel free to uh, go ahead and type those in the chat box now. Again, my name is David. I'm out of the Houston office. I really appreciate your guys' time and attending today.